Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the January 12th meeting for the Arlington Board of Selectmen. It's a little past 7.15, and I do call this meeting to order. Um, just a reminder that we are being filmed by ACMI, so uh, smile widely while at the microphone. Um, we'll, we'll jump right into it with... Oh, I would um, actually first like to remind everyone, if you're here for a Citizens Open Forum, there is a sign-up sheet outside, so please um, sign up for that. Um, prior to us reaching that agenda item. Um, to begin with an update from the Arlington Food F Pantry, um, Christine Bonjour, our uh, Director of Health and Human Services. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about the Food Pantry tonight. Uh, so as you know, the Arlington Food Pantry is a, a division of the Department of Health and Human Services, uh, which falls under my control. Um, and over the past year, we have been seeking out an alternative site. As you know, the main food pantry is located within the basement of a church, which makes it difficult for people with mobility issues and um, people with access issues. Um, we've also seen a, a dramatic increase in the number of residents needing assistance for food. Um, so over the past year, we've been working with a, a coalition of churches in town um, to seek out a new space. And over the past year, we were lucky enough to partner with the Housing Corporation um, and the, the Coalition of Religious Organizations, and we've secured an alternative site. Um, so we're currently uh, temporarily housed within the uh, former Broadway Diner, um, which is at 117 Broadway. The Housing Corporation of Arlington, as you know, purchased that site, and we're using it until they demolish the building and, and, and build commercial and housing, um, a mixed-use site, um, which we will then move both of our, um, our permanent site, the, the, the 21 Marathon Street site, as well as the temporary site into this new site at 117 Broadway. So we're really excited. With that comes so much work. We've got two sites to operate. We've got a lot of volunteers to manage. Um, as you know, all of the operations um, have relied on both donations from the public as well as um, volunteers to provide the food to the residents. So there's so much work. Um, there's even more work to go uh, to, to come down the, the, the line over the next year. Um, we're looking to uh, hire a food pantry, food pantry director. Um, the goal for that position will be to um, eventually bring this, um, bring the food pantry um, along as a, a, a private nonprofit. So we're looking to move this away from the town and, and to create a, a private nonprofit that will be eligible for more grants and foundation funds to really help build the food pantry even, even more. So that's really the long-term goal. It will be a part-time position. Um, we hope to post this within the next few days. Um, and so I guess at this point I'll just open it up for questions. Thank you very much um, for being here. It sounds like a pretty exciting time for the food pantry, and um, I know that a lot of this work is falling on your shoulders, so I do really appreciate that, and thank you very much. Um, questions from the board? Joe. Uh, I'll just say thank you for all your work on it. I mean, I've had occasion with some youth groups who have volunteered for the, the food pantry to visit each of the locations, and I think that this new one is um, so much more accessible to people who are coming looking for services as well as for volunteers who are coming to drop drop things off but um, it's understandable what the challenges are uh, managing those two sites so thank you for taking the initiative on this other questions <clears throat> yeah just uh, no question but great uh, i'm obviously very supportive and i'm really glad about the the progress you're making great thank you thank, thank you. you very much Christine. thank you Moving on, a presentation which is a report of the Building Maintenance Committee. Um, well, I have I'll Adam Chaplin. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so uh, back in 2012, the board voted to establish a Building Maintenance Committee uh, with the charge of evaluating the maintenance needs of town buildings, sites and facilities, recommending maintenance policies to the town manager, and to devise funding strategies to support ongoing maintenance demands. Uh, so that committee, <laughs> <laughs> that committee has been meeting for the past several years, uh, has uh, been comprised of the deputy town manager, uh, Andrew Flanagan, energy manager, uh, Ruthie Bennett, the CFO of the schools, Diane Johnson, uh, Diane Johnson has been part of that committee, um, superintendent of buildings, Mark Miano, uh, citizen representative, uh, Vincent Cervone, uh, Barbara Thornton as well, who was really the... Uh, the brains or the uh, real the impetus behind getting this building maintenance committee started uh, as well as a finance committee representative Christine Deschler uh, so uh, again they, they met quite regularly over the course of the past several years uh, formulated um, short mid and long-term policy recommendations for maintenance planning in town uh, 
but also, uh, as you will hear more about tonight, are going to recommend the creation of a facility, a consolidated facilities department with a department head level facilities director. Uh, that will be included, uh, or the town's portion of that funding will be included in the budget I submit on Thursday. Uh, so we thought both a general update on the work of this committee uh, as well as a discussion with the board about that proposed creation of the department and position uh, would be warranted before the budget was submitted on Thursday. So I don't know if this is going to work here. If you want to nix the projection and just. Uh, we'll, we'll do the um, best we can. I apologize. It's the first thing we'll look at close to the um, But I think a good place to start uh, is to take a look at um, the town's current organizational chart as it relates to facilities. Um, as you can see, so let me just tell you the, the positions you see in yellow are currently funded by the town. Um, and those positions in blue are funded by the school department. Uh, so just by taking a, a look at it, you can see it's uh, quite decentralized um, under the authority of the manager. Uh, there's five individuals, um, the recreation director, uh, public works director, our chief of police, myself, the planning director, and the library director, who all, to a certain degree, have building responsibilities and uh, responsibilities pertaining to the maintenance uh, and the cleaning and custodial services of the buildings. Um, going very quickly, um, I'll point out the public works director. Uh, you'll see, uh, as it is today, uh, the superintendent of buildings um, reports to the public works director, despite having uh, that position, um, most of the other positions in the school department funded by the school. Um, our human resource director on the town side uh, manages uh, hiring uh, and uh, hiring any associated employment. Uh, things as they relate uh, to both maintenance staff on the town side and on the school side. Um, the other piece is the cleaning contract. Um, as you see here, we have um, between the school department, uh, nine buildings that fall under the jurisdiction of the town, um, and uh, the rink. There's several different cleaning contracts. Again, all managed by folks who may not uh, traditionally their job responsibilities um, be responsible for maintaining overseeing the maintenance and facility services of their building. So in a few slides, we'll um, look at what's proposed. Um, but, uh, uh, I think it be. So um, as um, Adam said, the committee worked for a number of years, and they came up with a town-wide maintenance policy. We focused on three uh, different divisions of maintenance, short-term, mid-term, and long-term. Currently, the town does a very good job of long-term. You know, there's a capital committee. There's a process. All the department heads are involved. Mm -hmm. Thought always understood. Um, the short term maintenance and basically emergencies, those are taken care of, but they're they're not very structured. There are very few records of what the emergency was, what was done to repair it. So when you go to look back to see how we had this problem before, there's no record keeping structure. But the emergencies are taken care of. It just the staff is running in many different directions and they're not organized or centralized. The biggest um, issue that the committee found the town was lacking was this midterm maintenance policy. And that's really a way for the town and the school to maintain our assets. We've built a number of new buildings in the last decade at least, and without a policy of maintaining them before there's an emergency, the buildings are you know, decreasing in value quicker than they should. A lot of the equipment isn't maintained as well as it could. And there certainly aren't records for um, preventative maintenance that we're doing on a consistent basis because there isn't a structure for that. So that's the maintenance policy discussed these three different divisions. Um, the committee then developed recommendations to the town manager. One is to create this consolidated um, division, facilities division, where all the organizational elements that you saw previously would be consolidated and centralized um, under a director of this department. And so one of the recommendations is to fund a director position so there is one department head who's managing facilities. Clearly this person will interact with all the other department heads, but there is one location and one place where the facilities maintenance would be focused. Um, and then the other recommendation is consolidating the existing maintenance budgets from the town and the school, um, and we'll discuss later how that will happen in phases. But again, trying to make it more centralized and focused, so there is uh, one place to go and one person who manages along with the other department heads, all of our existing assets. So one of the things um, we looked at when developing these recommendations to the manager uh, was at some of our comparable and or neighboring communities uh, and see how they were uh, 
suppressing uh, their maintenance needs and whether or not they had a facility requirement and was it working well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see um, in either whether it be a neighboring community or a comparable community at the time in the salary survey, most of our comparable communities have uh, a centralized facilities function uh, as a standalone department. Um, what we did is we looked at um, total square footage of all the facilities in these um, towns, and you'll see at 1.3 million, we're above the average, yet we do not have a centralized facilities department. Uh, as it is today, there are 11 different department heads and or administrative staff that oversee just about 40 buildings. Um, and in that current structure, one of the major flaws we see for an otherwise uh, great process with regard to capital planning is we have capital uh, budget requests coming from several different people with regard to their facilities, um, rather than have uh, one person really wanting the facilities capital improvement program. Uh, so that again would be uh, another benefit. So based on um, everything uh, I've said and Ruthie has said, uh, can the proposed organizational chart as we see it? Um, you'll see a new color added to the mix uh, in this scenario, and it's green, which is jointly funded. Uh, position that would be um, jointly funded. Again, you'll see uh, the director of facilities would report to the town manager. Um, much more centralized um, structure. Uh, there'd be a deputy director. Ruthie is the energy manager. And then we said we really work hard to you know, get one to develop some administrative function, whether it be uh, a realignment of current resources and staff. Uh, but we think in order to be successful, uh, it's very important uh, to provide this department this proposed department with uh, administrative support. Right now, utility bill, uh, bills pertaining to improvements are paid by departmental clerks. So this would be uh, one way uh, to consolidate that. Um, also, uh, two distinct divisions, a uh, maintenance division and a custodial uh, division. Both uh, have a supervisor. These are both um, positions that exist right now. Um, what you see uh, that's a little bit different is the cleaning contracts will go under uh, the custodial division. Um, you know, a lot of people, everybody who manages the cleaning contract has gone home when they come to work. The way um, custodial divisions have established a supervisor can have seven in the morning at midnight. Um, so we can be assured that there's a lot more oversight uh, with regard to that. And then you see under the maintenance division, um, what we're calling the rental uh, building manager, which is really the general craftsman um, who oversees improvements in the inside our six buildings that uh, we currently rent out to um, different tenants. So, um, this is just uh, to serve as somewhat of a summary. Um, the town manager's implementation plan. Um, as Adam mentioned, it will be submitted to budget on Thursday. Uh, it will assume the creation of a facilities department. Um, we are recommending funding with the director of facilities position 50-50 um, between uh, the town side and the school side. Uh, as I mentioned, establish administrative function, um, consolidate reporting structure for all custodial and maintenance uh, personnel, and begin consolidating the maintenance budgets on the town side. So in year one, we're saying where can we consolidate uh, maintenance budgets that may exist in different departments now under this um, facilities department. And then in year two, um, look to consolidate the town and the school uh, maintenance budgets as one under a uh, standalone department. So um, that wraps up um, what we recommended, again, echoing um, Adam's initial uh, opening remarks. Uh, huge thanks to the committee. Um, they spent uh, countless hours meeting over the summer in for, for almost two years now, uh, really carefully looking at what works, what would work best for them, and their hard work is certainly reflected uh, in the recommendations uh, that you see tonight. So, um, with that, happy to answer any questions. Or Thank you <clears throat> very much. Um, Andrew Ruthie and all the other members. Um, you, we can tell quite a lot of work went into this. And um, with that, I'll open up the discussion or questions from the board to begin. Joe. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the work. Um, I had two questions on, on this. Um, the first is on the, um, the custodians, that uh, those that would be assigned to the schools. Was there any discussion about what the relationship will continue to be between those custodians and the principals who are ultimately 
you know, responsible during, you know, in large part for those facilities. And One thing we talked a lot about was maintaining those informal relationships yeah. that happen, whether it be town hall custodian and the manager's office or yeah. um, a school custodian and a principal. And that's something we all agree that it was essential to maintain yeah. as we move forward. So uh, a lot of talk about getting No, I know. Yeah. Both of that is existing. Kind yeah. Of home reporting and the informal day to day being on site. Right. Right. But it, it, it that can always you know dotted line relationships can always be a little bit tricky, and so I was just um, wondering if there was any discussion about that. The and the other question is on the rental building manager. Um, does that include this building and and um, the function that's that's held right now for? Uh, so the, the rental building manager does not have responsibilities associated with this. Not with this building at all. It's okay. like that, that will uh, be maintained as a 50-50 uh, funded position between the general fund and uh, the Arab Renewal Fund, which uh, one of the probably the biggest um, parts of uh, his job is maintaining uh, the central school. Okay. Um, so we fund 50% out of that and 50% out of the general fund. So that will be maintained. Okay. So it's just for those buildings that are currently uh, um, it's, it's, um, under the ARB plus the parameter? Is that in the Gibbs? In the Gibbs. Okay. I know that there's been a push to centralize the um, the rental functions for the school um, buildings. Was there any discussion of of trying to pull that in, into this function as well? There was. Is it is it envisioned that that will be part of this going forward? Um, when you say pulled in in terms of the funding plan. Not just the funding. Not just not just the funding. The management of rental for school facilities. So the way this nothing part of this. Yeah. So there's still Jefferson Cutter House, 23 Maple Street, and Central School report to or are under the jurisdiction of the ARB, while the power manager is under the jurisdiction of the board, and then the Gibbs um, and Down are under the jurisdiction of the manager. Okay. But the, the rental of school facilities won't be managed through this department <laughs> at the initial <laughs> level. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Mr. Greeley. So uh, thank you very much for all the work all of you have done. Barbara, how many years now have you been helping us here? Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> so um, I, when you were talking rental, you're talking about our properties, but I was wondering in terms of under here, when we rent out facilities like for weddings and that kind of thing, would that somehow be subsumed or somehow under this facilities manager? In terms of the, the maintenance care of the facilities? Or the no, rent? like we rent out town hall for weddings. Uh, isn't that part of a facility maintenance? Right, and the way it works now is um, <coughs> the custodians who uh, basically take, take those jobs on overtime rate, uh, that's all coordinated by the custodian supervisor working with Patsy. So that, that, that's happening. But right, but I'm actually talking about Patsy as event coordinator. Um, again, I think she's the other one with some informal you know, relationship between her and the custodian. So uh, she worked very closely today as a supervisor and custodian. I know, but you keep talking about custodians. I'm talking about the job of actually event uh, rental, uh, building rentals. Again, it's not that we formalized in here. But okay. Um, and so I'm, I'm sure, but how, how are the schools on this? So What's their reaction to this? Are they all they they on board? Yeah, no, Diane Johnson. Has, Diane Johnson yeah, has I know. Them. I heard she's on, yeah, as well. And uh, it's probably too early, but are we expecting cost savings because of this? Excuse me. Well, well, one thing we've said is that not to expect the cost savings uh, initially, but what we hope to be able to do is maintain our assets in a much uh, more coordinated and beneficial way for the town. Yeah. So boilers remain in five more years under roofs, windows, building envelopes. Yeah. All that type of stuff, uh, we look to see as basically an efficiency gain Opposed to a monetary game. Well, if I say, I think part of the challenge in seeing the financial game, which I do think we will see, is that um, you, you can't see what would happen if we didn't, right? But we can tell you as you look at the buildings over time, the longer you take to do that midterm maintenance, the more expensive it is, and the more rushed you do it, and the better, you know, the less you have. Right, 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 right. So in that sense, yes, yeah, so if we do it more organized and on a schedule, right. things won't go down as quickly. 
So you will see savings, but it won't be as obvious as now we have a new boiler and it uses less electricity or less right. water. So, right. But I do think that clearly our buildings need to be maintained more consistently, and that will save us money because they'll last longer. Yeah, I mean, look how long it took us to get to the elementary schools and what that, that has cost us now. But uh, lots of benefits to it. Thank you. Great work. Thank you very much. Diane. Um, I want to thank Barbara for, as usual, sticking to something and following through. Um, I, I really appreciate that because you've spent so many years and you, you hang with it. <laughs> um, just a uh, comment. First of all, I'm in full support of the director of facilities um, position. I had more extensive conversation with the town manager that was really me just bouncing things off. Um, I, I do applaud um, the fact that the schools are on board with this. It is a 50-50 um, funded position. But I also um, am happy to see, similar to what we've done with IT, that um, the ultimate reporting is to the town manager. Um, initially, when we tried that out, there were a few people that kind of had some trepidation about whether that would be successful. And I think we've shown, you know, there's been no turf war or anything being held up. So it definitely does work and can work. Um, it's probably a little bit too early, uh, probably won't be till year three or maybe the end of year two that any anticipating uh, sort of growth of the department or position. It seems right now we're establishing the director of facilities, incorporating in what current employees we have, whether they're supervisors or actual custodians themselves. Um, just to put on the table, this question may not know the answer. Will it be, say in the future we determine that we do need to grow this department with an additional person or persons, um, is it we go back to the table and discuss with the school superintendent and Diane Johnson, or is it already a given that as long as both sides agree, it will follow the similar 50-50 funding. Now that may be, and what I'm thinking of is one of the things I'm really excited by is one of my previous jobs for the Baby Bells, which is now Verizon, was as a loading clerk. Um, and one of the things that was invaluable for the equipment that the phone company had is to know all your transformers, your senders, your mockers, know what the maintenance plan was to get the extra five to seven years out of them keep track of, you know, back then, I think it was uh, D-Base 3 and Lotus 1, 2, 3 that we were, we were tracking things on, which is very scary. But once you plug that in, but um, and maybe we, this person exists, but really knowing someone that knows equipment, knows the maintenance schedule, knows the craft, you know, I would have 20 linemen outside and 40 cent trunkmen inside, and I would know, you know, you send Jebba to the one that, you know, that kind of thing. So. That person may already exist, but I, I think I heard you all sort of talking about that in the future. Maybe that's something, a position we grow with a current employee, but I think that is so vital to have a person, at least, or whatever the town manager in this committee deems in the future, that really um, gets on board with that because um, there, there are some other things that are, I'll take the turf, for example. You know, we've stretched extra years out of it, but we could have got a good five or six more years out of it if the maintenance plan which we are now doing. <clears throat> so I guess I would just advocate for the future. It sounds like you all are talking about that. You know, as you get into this right now, you want to get the director of facilities uh, program up and running. But I can't say how much I think that's a vital, important position. And I really think it needs to be a unique position versus when you spread it out, things fall through the cracks. So I, I just wanted to put that. Well, that's fair. Thank you very much. Further? Um, I just had one question looking at the um, organization chart. Um, so looking at, I'm looking at the updated one. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about the deputy director position that's on it? And is that a new position? Because I didn't see that on the initial um, org chart either. It would essentially be the retitling of the existing. Okay. So, um, net new positions is one. Okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. No, I'm. Um, I think this is a good plan, and I, I think this will be a wise investment that uh, pays off in the long run. And I, I really like seeing the town and schools work together, too. I think um, that's a really good step in the right direction um, into what we're, you know, is an overall goal of, you know, moving that way in the future. So thank you all very much for your hard work, um, and uh, we'll certainly reap the benefits of this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you need a little time to shut this down, or can we we'll move on? Sounds good. Um, thank you all. Um, moving on, consent agenda. 
the minutes of meeting for our December 22nd meeting. For approval, the cause and event, Arlington 2015 5K race, which is slated for May 17th, 2015, and the request for a contractor drain layer license by uh, KB Aruda Construction, Inc. Um, we have a motion. Move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. Mr. Dunn. I just want to comment that, um, Adam, correct me if I'm wrong, but the part of this race that's on the Minuteman is actually for you to approve, not us. That, that is how we're currently operating. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, correct. Okay. Just worth noting. Thank you very much. That is worth noting. Um, discussion from the board? Discussion from the crowd? Seeing. Oh, here. We've got some hands. <coughs> Come on up. For the um, Julie and Robin? Yeah, I'm Julie. And I'm Robin. Great, please. So we are um, the co-race directors for this race. It's a race that started in Portland, Oregon three years ago, so it's been run successfully for three years. The women who started it were in touch with, and so we have a lot of their learnings. But um, I have an, a background in project management and event management, so we feel very confident we can take this on. We have um, a race committee of about 15 women in Arlington and a few surrounding communities who have already volunteered to help us to run this. And we have um, almost 250 racers that will sign up if this is approved um, through the Fit Girl program that's run through the Arlington Public Schools. So the woman who organizes that is really excited about this and wants this to be the race if we can get it approved. Um, so the, as you can see from the materials that we submitted, the exciting part about this race is that each runner gets to choose the charitable organization that benefits from half of their race registration. So if we are aiming for somewhere around 500 runners total, um, each of those runners will make a choice about which um, charity is going to be the beneficiary of what we're hoping to be about $15 from each of the registrations. Um, so that's a possibility for 500 different charities to um, be supported through the race or um, charities that are able to field larger teams of runners. Um, so that's sort of the spin about what makes this race different from some of the other races that people can register for. Um, so I think with our connections in the community and our kids' schools, um, there are a lot of organizations out there that could really stand to benefit um, from the race. And part of the committee's work is to reach out to local organizations to have them promote it to their, you know, the people who support them to say, hey, we're going to get money basically if you sign up and you select us. So that could be organizations within the community. It could be schools. It could even be I was talking to a neighbor and she's like, my daughter's lacrosse team. Could this be the way they raise their money? Absolutely. You can choose any nonprofit of your choice. Very cool. And uh, please tell me again where uh, we can sign up and <laughs> the date again. The proposed date that we'd like to do is May 17th, mm -hmm. which is a Sunday. When I worked Excuse with me. the police chief, his recommendation was Sundays are better than Saturdays, early in the morning is best. And so we want to really do, we want to impact the community as little as possible in terms of traffic and, and problems, but obviously the most in terms of raising the money for com the community. Um, registration will open hopefully once we finalize things yeah. with you Maybe all tonight. Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. Uh, questions from the board? Seeing none. Comments, questions from the crowd? Seeing none, um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Good luck. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Moving on, appointments. Um, an introduction. Do we want to vote it? What? Do we want to vote it? We did just vote. Did we vote it? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I want to vote it again. Yeah. <laughs> um, moving on, appointments. For an introduction for the newly appointed Equal Opportunity Advisory Committee member. Sarah Elizabeth Hershon. Hi, I'm Hello. Sarah Hershon. Hello, can you uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, why you'd like to serve on the committee and all that good stuff? Sure. Um, my name is Sarah Hershon. I've lived in Arlington for the past six years in East Arlington. Um, I'm a lawyer by training. Um, I do commercial litigation. I do a little bit of labor litigation, intellectual property litigation, and recently started a fashion law at my law firm. Um, I wanted to join this committee because I have a two-year-old little girl. Um, we love Arlington. We, when we bought our house, we 
really were Cambridge transplants and weren't sure we wanted to stay. Um, we had lived in the Davis Square area and thought, hmm, East Arlington, it's sort of an extension of Cambridge. It's more affordable, so we'll buy a house, but have really um, grown to love Arlington and want to develop um, some roots in the community. I've always, since I was um, a young student, um, been involved with um, people who are either um, less fortunate than I was, had dis disabilities, um, trying to promote women and um, especially equal. Um, my father is a lawyer and always sort of promoted, said to me, you can do anything. He tried to sort of break the glass ceiling for me um, and encouraged me to do whatever I could to make sure that there was a level playing field. And so I've, throughout my career and even in high school and college, tried to do the same thing and hope to continue to be able to do that for my daughter. Great. Thank you very much. Um, questions from the board? Mr. Dunn. Uh, thank you very much for volunteering. And uh, I really like your story because it sounds so much like mine. And I mean this because some of the people up here uh, had the fortune to be born in Arlington, whereas I was the same way just a, a little bit earlier. I moved in in 1999 and I was like, yeah, there's this place, you know, it's not that far from Fenway. I can, I can do it. And uh, after living here for a few years, I was like, wow, this place is pretty good. And uh, it's beautiful to see it continue to work its magic. So thank you very much for volunteering and you are part of what makes it good. Thank you, Tim. Mm. Further? Move approval. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Good luck. Moving on, an appointment to the Disability Commission for uh, Cynthia DeAngelis. Hi. Hi, Cynthia. Hello. Please, can you tell us uh, a little bit about yourself as well? Uh, Why would you like to serve on the committee? Um, oh, there's lots of reasons, but <laughs> I'll start with that probably you can since high school. <laughs> yeah, I will. I love to talk. Um, since high school, I've been working with disabled individuals. Went to Boston College, worked at the campus school for multiply handicapped kids, um, and then I graduated in May of 1977. There you go. Now you know how old I am, <laughs> and uh, and went to work in Winchester Public Schools. So I've been a special educator. I've taught multiply handicapped kids. Um, I always say I have a heart and a head and a belly full of special ed and, <laughs> and it's near and dear to my heart. Everything about um, working with disabled individuals and helping and now I have the opportunity because I'm quasi retired, not really, um, but I'm doing consulting for families and then I realized, well, I could now I have the time which I, I didn't before to really volunteer and it's been something I've wanted to do for a long time. So I've been here 35 years. So I was born in Belmont, stayed there for about 20 something years and popped over the uh, side here. And I love it, I love the town. So hmm. just wanna give back. Thank you very much. Mr. Gray. And Adam convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good interview. <laughs> so, yeah, it's fun. Do you have Move any Move approval, but thank you very much for oh. your willingness to help you're, us like You're that. very welcome. I'm, I'm actually honored to do it, so. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Further, second. We have a motion and a second for the discussion. See, yes, thank you. I just want to say I had the opportunity briefly before the meeting. Uh, you share the same first name as my youngest, so oh. you're already near and dear to my heart. <laughs> but um, I've sort of traversed a little bit in the special education world and know all the different travails and yeah. peaks and lows. And, and certainly from speaking from you, not only do you have the experience, but you definitely have the intestinal fortitude, yeah. um, that really strong bone that you need um, to work in that community and thrive with that community. And I really look forward and know that you're going to excel on this. Um, and I anticipate this is probably going to be a springboard to some other things. Oh, I hope so. I have so. my way. <laughs> so well, I, I want to so. thank you. I love working with teams. That's the other thing. I love big meetings where it can get adversarial, but it shouldn't. And really learning and, and, and figuring out ways in order for all of us to kind of um, make peace with decisions and agree to disagree sometimes. So I've been doing that on the special ed end for a long time. So um, that's the part I love is being on a commission like that where it's lots of personalities. Thank you. Right. Thank you very cool. much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion, a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Best of luck.
Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on. Citizens Open Forum, um, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the Open Forum was established. Should we note that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request? Um, the first one I have is um, Michael Lafferty, but I do un understand that um, Michael is here, might be here for agenda item number eight. So we'll uh, take that after the Citizens Open Forum. And the next is uh, Jill Manka. Oh, sorry for the <laughs> sorry for the confusion. So we do not have. Is there anyone else for Citizens Open Forum? Seeing none, I, I'd like to thank everyone for signing in, and um, we're still working on the implementation of this. So thank you very much. Um, Next, traffic rules and orders and other business. A request for a handicapped parking sign at 16 Whittemore Street for Michael Lafferty. Michael. Uh, with sciatic damage to both legs, getting in and out of a car is a problem. When the car door is fully open, you can back in, sit down, lift your legs in. So it's not too bad. Now, our driveway is too narrow to open the car door completely. You can open it, just open it halfway. That gets very hard to get you swing your legs in. The door gets in the way. So it can be painful in that. Uh, the solution I certainly was thinking of is being able to park at the curb in front of our house where I can open the door completely, get in and out, and if I want to go out later, it's there, and, and I don't have to depend on anybody else to bring the car out for me. Thank you. It would certainly make the quality of life a little better. Thank you, Michael. Um, Kevin. Yeah, uh, move approval, subject to uh, any conditions as set forth, second. and best of luck to you, sir. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mr. Dunn. I just want to comment that we, um, we've we got a recommendation for approval for the people at home who are watching or whatever from the police department. So I'm happy to support. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Um, seeing none, I would um, like to thank both the police and fire department for their recommendations and um, all the legwork they do for this, as well as Mr. Laftery for uh, coming in tonight. So with a motion and a second, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five nothing vote. Thank you, Mr. Laffer Lafferty. Moving on, for approval, Arlington Public Art. Adria and Jill. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Will you start? OK. okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so, oh, no, you go. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I guess I will say maybe we'll start with a, B, then C, and we'll take three separate votes to, for the okay. level of simplicity. Sure, sure. So um, I want to just thank you all for being so supportive of Arlington Public Art and um, allowing us to do our projects the last four years. And we've got a full uh, plate this, this 2015. And so we are asking um, for your approval for Cheerful Where You Sit, um, again, at Whittemore Park in front of the Dallin Museum. We are, again, uh, collaborating with Dallin Museum. And um, last year, we raised $9,000. This year, we hope to even do better than that. Um, so that's very exciting. And um, then we're also, well, let's see. So you wanted to take that by itself? Cheerful where you sit. Yeah. Please. The date? What, 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 ah, the date. The date is July uh, 10th through the 12th. And it's the same weekend as the Arlington Alive Block Party. We thought that that is an obvious thing to try and do, uh, bring them together, as well as Shakespeare in the Park is the same weekend. So it'll really be a full arts weekend. Thank you very much. Should we have a motion? Joe should probably, you want to move that, Joe? Uh, I'll move it. I move <laughs> approval. <laughs> second. A motion and a second. Further discussion? Discussion from the crowd? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Great, thank Five you. Nothing. Moving on, Art Rocks at Spy Pond. Ah, yes, so last year, Art Rocks Bonotomy was such a huge success that we just couldn't help ourselves but do another one. And this is a great collaboration with the Parks Department and the Parks Commission. They have been super uh, 
supportive of the project. And um, so we are asking permission to um, do a public art, temporary, three week long public art exhibition at Spy Pond Park. And um, yeah, the, the dates are May 3rd through the, no, excuse me, it's opening May 9th and um, down May, May 30th. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Well, oh, uh, or a question first. I have a question. Do, do we need to approve this if it's under the park and rec? I mean, we can move to support it, but I think, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think it was mostly, yeah, to support yeah. it, yeah. So I move to support support the Art Rocks, Art Rocks uh, Spy Pond. Okay. Do we have a second? Great. Second. We have a motion and a second. All the further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Moving and on, yeah, Transformer yeah. Box Project 2015. Yes, uh, in 2015, we'd like to continue with this project, um, and it will be in the Arlington Heights area from Brattle Street to, um, there's one in back of Trader Joe's. Um, I believe you have a map. Um, we do. So you can see where those things are. Does anybody need a map? Okay. Um, so I'm in touch with Michael Radmacher, um, who thinks that uh, Trader Joe's the, the transformer box behind Trader Joe's may or may not be owned by the town. <laughs> so he's looking into that. <laughs> so um, we have a total of six um, uh, this year that we'd like to do, and the um, theme is pattern. Um, then there's also one that's going to be done at the high school, um, and it'll be done er on an earlier schedule. Hmm, thank you very much. I, um, I really like this project. I think it, it's nice to see around town. Um, but that being said, um, is there a motion? I, I move move to approve it. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Uh, Riley. So, and if you've already covered this, excuse me. So uh, next year, are you going to continue from Brattle Street down to the center? or? Uh, it'll be from, um, you mean in 2015 or 20, mean 2016? 2016. 2016, I mean, because this is covering from the Heights to Brattle Street, right? Yes. So this, hopefully in 2016, we'll do East Arlington. Okay. Yeah, because we did the center last year. This year we'll do the Heights, and then next year the East Arlington. Okay, right. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very much for being here. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> um, moving on, I think... Um, we're going to take uh, agenda item number 12, a discussion regarding the police chief recruitment um, next. So, uh, Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so at the last selectman's meeting, uh, I believe under new business, I had <coughs> confirmed with the board uh, that Chief Fred Ryan would be leaving uh, the position of chief of police with Arlington to go become chief of police with the MBTA and told the board that uh, Hopefully by this meeting I'd be able to outline my intended process for both an interim replacement uh, for the chief as well as a permanent replacement. So I provided the board with a <clears throat> somewhat detailed memo about some of the considerations uh, that I've taken into account over the past several weeks, uh, some conversations that I've had and, and tried to describe my thought process about, uh, about the chief's replacement. Uh, to start, uh, for the interim chief, uh, what I am looking to do is uh, identify within the ranking officers group uh, an officer uh, who is not interested uh, in the permanent chief's position as to not give uh, a potential interim chief uh, a leg up uh, on the permanent chief's position. So I've uh, started that through the chief, um, through the current chief, Ryan, conversations with, uh, with some of the ranking officers. Uh, would hope to continue that over the course of the next few weeks and hopefully have someone named before the end of January, but certainly before the end of February. Uh, when Chief Ryan actually does leave uh, the town. So I will keep the board uh, informed about that appointment, hopefully, again, over the course of the next few weeks. In terms of a permanent replacement, um, uh, quickly, uh, as I laid out in the memorandum to the board, uh, there's, there's several possibilities. Uh, there's a civil service process. The chief's position is currently a civil service position. Uh, that would be strictly for internal candidates uh, and would be a regimented process. Uh, that would allow uh, up to four candidates uh, from each successive rank. So I gave a scenario where if uh, there's currently three captains, if two captains signed up for 
uh, the process, then it would move down to lieutenants, but if two lieutenants signed up, it would not be able to move to sergeants. Uh, conversely, if you didn't reach four, it could go down to sergeants. Um, uh, and there would be a scoring system uh, that would provide candidates one through three with scores, uh, and to choose anybody other than number one, you would need to provide bypass reasons that could be challenged in civil service. Uh, another option that was under consideration was a civil service process, but an open competitive process that would be open to civil service candidates from across the state. Um, con had some concerns uh, with that, mainly uh, because the way that system is working currently is any uh, veteran who otherwise qualified and had a passing score would automatically go to the top of the list. Well, I certainly think veteran preferences have their place in, in governmental hiring and any hiring. Uh, automatic top of the list for a veteran candidate um, didn't provide me with the flexibility I think that I would desire in the hiring of a police chief. Uh, and then a third option would be to uh, consider removing the position from civil service, uh, then having the flexibility to look externally, remain internally, uh, but be able to develop a more flexible process uh, for the selection of the next police chief. Um, some of the things I did when considering this, uh, met with the leadership of both the ranking officers union and the patrol union, uh, had discussions with the town council, HR director, uh, deputy town manager, uh, the, the fire chief who has a perspective on civil service, just trying to formulate my perspective on all of this. And where I came down was I feel very strongly about the management flexibility that's afforded by a non-civil service process, uh, but I was also very compelled by comments that were made to me by members of uh, both police unions in regards to the fact that we, we are very proud of our police department. They recently accredited a uh, very, uh, very successful police department, and it would seem to be speaking out of both sides of our mouth from the management or leadership position to then turn around and say we need to go outside the department to find uh, its next leader. So uh, the course of action that I would like to pursue is through the town meeting process and then <clears throat> through the approval of special legislation, taking the position out of civil service, but committing for this recruitment to keeping it as an internal process so that um, we will have the folks in the department, men and women in the Arlington Police Department, having the shot of becoming the next police chief. I, I think it strikes a balance between the flexibility of choice uh, that I think is appropriate for the management and leadership of the community to have, along with uh, maintaining morale uh, within the, the ranks of the Arlington Police Department. So happy to have a discussion, but that's the um, thought process I went through, the considerations I had, and the uh, path that I'd like to uh, follow. Thank you <clears throat> very much, Adam. Um, this was a um, you know, very informative memo that you sent us, and I think it proves that Quite a lot of work went into it, and this is an important decision, and um, I appreciate the um, amount of legwork you um, stuck into this prior to this meeting. Um, I will open up to questions, comments from the board. Diane. Um, I have a question. I apologize for not, <clears throat> it wasn't as I was sitting looking at this whole thing. Um, are you asking us tonight, obviously you and I have had conversations regarding the civil service chief. Um, and it's my understanding that that would be going to town meeting or a special town meeting um, to do that. Are you planning on waiting until town meeting to do that? Or are you anticipating a special? So my, my thoughts would be to um, ask the board to consider calling a special town meeting within the annual town meeting so that we wouldn't have to go to any extra efforts to call the special town meeting, but have it scheduled early in the town meeting, if not the first night, the second night, uh, to be able to have this warrant article or potential warrant article acted upon and then get that piece of home rule legislation up to the legislature as quickly as possible. With that caveat, um, could I ask tonight, are, if I had my druthers, we would be voting the process um, that you've outlined because to me the civil service component of it will be a separate meeting um, and a separate discussion as well as I think an important vote for the board. Um, would it hinder you tonight if what we voted was to um, approve the process that you have before us, which in effect is not taking the civil service route, but is um, open it to internal candidates only. Because I agree that we do have a very good Arlington Police Department. We do have great community relations. We're on top and at the forefront of everything. And the next chief that I see, 
um, I think will really benefit um, with whatever internal candidate is successful, and I can think of a few, in the sense of I don't think that we need a change agent to come in right now to the Arlington Police Department as we did years before. I think we're 75 percent down the road and we need someone with the experience and maturity that can continue on and maintain what we have. So um, would it hinder you tonight if what we voted was the process that you've outlined here, which is in the civil service process, um, and then when we have that hearing for the special town meeting regarding civil service, because I don't want to go into a big long speech about why I think civil service is important unless this is the night to have it as well as um, your thoughts on that. So I guess I, I, I put this course out there for the board's input tonight, hopefully support, mm -hmm. with the understanding that there are caveats. Uh, okay. Certainly the board needs to vote affirmatively on a recommended vote of town meeting at some point through the warrant article mm -hmm. screening and review process. And then there would need to be town meeting approval of that. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I guess we, yeah, what I'm saying tonight, this is my intended course of action, understanding that there is still approvals okay. that are necessary. All right, then I'm not going to belabor this civil service point until we get to that part where <clears> we really should do it, just for the sake. And, but I definitely do have strong opinions on that, and I've shared them with um, the town manager, and um, we'll have done, I hope, and we'll continue to do it in a respectful manner. Of course. Thank you, Diana. Joe. Um, thank you. Uh, first, uh, uh, Mr. Manager, it's, it's clear that you've bent over backwards trying to make sure you talk to all of the stakeholders involved here, and I, I really want to thank you for that because I think that's extraordinarily important um, when we're undertaking something like this. Um, secondly, I think to, to Diane's point and um, kind of echoing her, you know, when an organization is challenged, you can see that, that there is an imperative really often to go outside and bring somebody, somebody in, but... Um, you know, this organization is far from challenge. I mean, the last time before us was to, to um, uh, report on the recent accreditation. So I, I, I think that um, we do have to acknowledge that. And um, at the same time, I, I, I want to um, just commend you, though, on, on outlining a process whereby we can acknowledge uh, all the accomplishments of the Arlington Police Department, reward the members of the department, also maintain some reasonable flexibility in a way that's sensitive also to anyone who might be um, applying for the for the um, for the position. So, um, it, unless somebody else wants to, I'm happy to to move to support the recommendations you've put before us uh, tonight. So. Thank you, Joe. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Dan, I uh, I guess I, one of the things that I hadn't really come to, to roost in my head yet. That so. The position will, we're going to be with an interim chief for probably six months, maybe even a little more. That's, that's correct. Okay. Uh, I, so I, in an earlier conversation with Adam, I shared some of the, the things that um, I think are important in the uh, I don't know, traits and skills and attitude that the future police chief has. And I think that he agrees with most of what I was suggesting. And uh, I trust him to do the right thing, and so I'm happy to support this. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Greeley. Yeah, uh, there's no question in my mind uh, about the excellent personnel we have within the department, and surely there's a chief among them. But I, I would ask two points. One, Diane, I believe by supporting this, we're supporting him removing it from civil service. So I, I just want to be clear, I think that's what we're supporting. Uh, that's what he's recommending we do here. I, so I, I was under that impression yeah. as well. But I, I think that. so. I would interpret it. I, I would agree that we are that that is what we're supporting. But I think that also we are going to have if, if we're going to have a vote to choose. We're saying also that we're going right. to um, have a special town meeting, but we're not actually taking that vote either. And then that's going to have an article, and then we're going to have a talk about whether or not to support the article right. to remove civil service. And so this is, I would argue, the first of many votes that we're going to take that are taking this out of civil service. Yeah, I just want to be clear what I yeah. thought I was supporting. Um, so uh, if I may, Adam, how does this play out? Are you putting together a committee to interview? or I mean, how, how does it happen from here? So we would actually... Uh, oh, the interim will be named, and that, I assume, would be your choice. <clears throat> so we would put together a process that wouldn't look altogether that different from the way most other police hirings or promotions, uh, not so much hirings, but promotions are done. Uh, or how a civil service process is Which done. is? Explain. So we would have, uh, we would hire a third party evaluator. Uh, there are several professional groups, both locally and nationally, that do that. Uh, there'd be a written component. 
there would be a verbal component in front of a panel and most likely an interview component uh, in front of me or maybe myself and a couple other town personnel. And I, I think the most important thing that I didn't mention as part of a non-civil service process is we would really be able to tell that assessment group what it is we're looking for in a police chief. Civil service process can be a little bit more regimented. We'll be able to outline those characteristics and traits that we're looking for in the next chief. Things that you know Dan mentioned, um, you know, looking for a chief that has you know uh, an interest in community policing, an ability to communicate with the public and the media. Th things that Chief Ryan brought to the table, along with the hard skills that we want for someone to be able to manage the budgets and day-to-day -day operations of the police department. So I think th this the process would be a pretty robust process, uh, but mirroring similar promotional processes in the police department. And, and that evaluation team, group, whatever, would provide you with three names, would give you top scores? What? Yeah, so we would plan under this situation of asking for uh, probably somewhere between three to five names. So we'd, you know, if there were five that rose to the top, give, <coughs> give us more. And instead of giving us exact scores, uh, you know, band them if possible so that it's not as clear that you're jumping over somebody um, from score to score, but have uh, more of a... Uh, undefined choice right and and to you and you would to choose me, from yes. those or interview I would assume each and then yes yeah. and um, uh, so am I right any current officer is available to apply under this process so we would probably put together criteria that had a certain amount of supervisory experience and a certain amount of Number years of as a years. ranking officer so I think I, I, I we haven't made it hard and fast but I would think at least having attained the rank of sergeant with some number of years in that position would be the minimum criteria Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Yes. Can I just say, um, when we vote, um, I will vote to abstain. I don't want to vote against this in the sense that um, I agree with all the hard work and the input that the manager has gotten from everybody, including us. Um, I think you've outlined a sort of good paradigm. Um, not to belabor the point, but I really feel strongly about a civil service chief. In my tenure as a member of the Board of Selectmen, there was only one t era when I first became a selectman, that we didn't have a civil service chief. And I don't like to go back and pass history, um, but I'll let others, you know, interpret that as they may, um, as well as when our current chief that we had, sort of echoing on that time and era, of one of the reasons um, that we uh, went to town meeting and said, please make this chief a civil service chief, was sort of one of the provisions um, that, that I don't want to say protection would provide, um, but I think we sort of looked at the lessons of years past. And you know, when I first got on the board, we did not have a civil service chief, and um, as well as I, I equate it to, you know, when you go to a physician, do you want someone that couldn't get into the U.S. or Canada or England, went to one of the islands for med school, passed, took the EFCMG and flex exam, or do you want someone that went to a teaching hospital, interned, resident, wasn't attending? went and sat for their boards, got board certification, and has continued to maintain their qualifications. So I sort of equate the civil service process with that, as well as um, from my first years on the board, as well as one of the reasons why we did the current chief. Also, there are politics involved sometimes, and the, civil ser the protection that the civil service um, designation provides really puts a strong sort of firewall to that. So I'll stop on that. I just want to let my colleagues know, you know, I'm not just doing it to say I'm not going to vote for it, but I'm going to abstain because I agree with the process and all the hard work everyone's put into it. And when this does come up as a special town meeting, and I agree with whatever the town manager wants to do to put this in um, um, for a special town meeting and then get into more, um, try to convince at least two of you all up here, which I'm, <coughs> I'm going to try. But thank you very much. So I, I will abstain. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a motion. Did we have a second as well? Um, yeah, yeah, second. Second. yeah. Further discussion? Seeing none. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Abstain. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. 401. Thank you very much, um, Thank everyone. You. Thanks, Adam. Moving on, um, we'll go up to uh, number 10. Um, for approval, a letter to the FAA that we spoke about at our uh, last meeting. We received um, some correspondence from uh, the resident, Peter Jones. And um, this was a letter 
that I drafted, and I hope um, you'll take a vote to support. Um, before we do vote, I do just want to thank um, Frank Ciano, who is uh, Arlington's um, representative on the Boston Logan Airport uh, Noise Study Committee. And um, he did um, take a look at this draft with me and made sure all the key points were hit. And um, he, um, that's a hard committee to be on, and he does some great work. And um, it's one of those ones that you probably, you know, are spreading more bad news than good news to residents, and uh, that's never a fun thing. But he's uh, certainly a great voice for Arlington on it, and um, he is uh, mm -hmm. working with him was a, a real pleasure on this, and I do thank him very much. Um, that being said, I, I hope everyone got a chance to read the letter, and I'm happy to take any edits, but um, we'll go from there. Move approval. God bless you. Uh, second, I do have two edits okay. just to suggest and a comment. Uh, so legit, uh, I, wanna, I suggest we change uh, take off to flight operations and change departing to using. Take off. Departing to what? what using. Uh, remove the, in one place we say take off and I want to change it to flight operations. So instead of just talking about planes that take off, I want to talk about all flight operations. I want I think we should talk landing as well. That's what I'm aiming at. Yeah. I, so yep. I was thinking that. Yeah. And the letter that we got, yeah. I think I, I was under the impression that Arlington was only affected by the takeoff pattern from okay. it and not the landing. Yeah. And so I, I really wanted to make this tailored to our concerns. Okay. And that's kind of where, where that came from. I guess I hadn't realized that it was that detailed. Okay. All right. Um, the comment was I just uh, that I uh, got an email uh, from. Uh, Will Brownsberger, and they did. There is a change coming. He said that's going to make a little bit of a difference. That they're taking that uh, Logan is going to be approved again to do uh, two direction takeoff and landing out to the ocean, where because for safety reasons they've been restricted to only either doing takeoff or landing, and now they're going to be able to do both over the ocean. And, but and it's not. It is not the solution to the problem. It is a it minor. It is an improvement. Oh, thank you. Um, go. To your second edit, yep. it was. I'm it was sorry. the same. Oh, my second edit was the exact same point. Uh, I was making the same point in two places, but um, okay. Are you I'm, cool with? I'm happy. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, further discussion. Yo. Yeah, my only my only discussion. I th I think that you should sign on behalf of the board and maybe just have an introductory sentence saying that I write to you on behalf of the board of selectmen of the town of Arlington. I, I don't think for something like this that we would typically. And all five of us sign. Would we? I don't know. Was, we usually we do the stationery that has all five of our names at the top. Which we do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But sometimes. It's, yeah. If that sounds good. That to sounds me. fine by me. Although we represent the town of Arlington, so unless you want to change it. To That's why I was suggesting just an introductory sentence. I write to you on behalf of the board of selectmen of the town of Arlington. If I may suggest, we you were, could also, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. No. Yes. If I may suggest, you could also just put in very truly yours, Board of Selectmen by Stephen Byrne, Chair of the Board of Selectmen. You want to do that? You know, I don't feel very strongly I don't feel about strongly about it either. either. Whatever the past practice has been, I'm just trying to make it streamlined so we don't okay. Okay. all have so to come up here and sign I, the I letter. And the maybe week. if it's yeah. okay, I'll just take Joe's recommendation and mm -hmm. we'll run with that. I think it's good. Right. Okay. Um, thank you very much. We had a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on, Mr. Greeley, discussion. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I submit to the board for your approval the policy related to alcohol uh, in the town of Arlington and with a big note of thanks to Marianne, to Doug, and to Eve uh, for the work that they put in. I had no idea when we started this that this policy would take 32 pages mm -hmm. Uh, we are now in the process of uh, uh, working on a parking policy, which is going to be, we, we've not had that uh, before. But uh, I only had one uh, recommendation that I would make, um, but otherwise, uh, whatever, if basically what we've tried to capture here is what does exist as our policy. And uh, I, I believe the chairman has something he'd like to discuss uh, tonight, but I would recommend almost instead of the kind of table of contents that all we really need to do is if you go to the sec the next page, page three, 
just put page numbers after each one of those, the types of licenses to be granted in Arlington. I mean, it really serves as a second table of content. Not a big deal, but I'm just saying, just put a page number after alcohol licenses for restaurants, page four, uh, uh, all alcohol package store licenses, page 17 or whatever. So I'm just, I just, it's to save a page. Yeah, it's, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Um, and other than that, uh, you know, I don't, did, yeah, other than changes, uh, anybody see anything inaccurate in there or something that's not, uh, anybody want to recommend any? I have, I have some comments, but yeah. Okay, um, okay so well, further comments, we'll start with that. All right. Joe. Yeah, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get back into my Novus agenda and have have the thing open we'll, plus my maybe, comments. Maybe we'll start with the end. Yeah, 32 okay. pages. It's yeah, I'm happy to. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I just a couple things. So one uh, was a question that I had had for Doug that he answered for me today that I just think is worth us uh, having in mind when we talk about it. And that is, we are not affecting alcohol delivery in town because that's done. Uh, that regulation of alcohol delivery is on the state level, so there's nothing in here that we're doing. That, I mean, there is alcohol delivery in Arlington, and this po we are, if we approve this policy, that is unchanged, and it is unlikely we could change that even if we wanted to within this policy. So that was one comment I was going to do. <coughs> um, the one change that I... Uh, so there's two changes that I would like to make. So first of all, I can support this as it is right now. I've voted for it in the past. I can vote for it again. As a whole, I think it's a good policy. That said, there are a couple things that I would do differently if I, you know, wielded my magic wand or my scepter of, you know, total power. And that would, first of all, is uh, I would make it clear within this that it is okay for the serving of alcohol in the town gardens when town hall is rented with, like, you know, with... With, ca with the appropriate caveats and the right appropriate restrictions, you know, do, uh, is a tip certified? Is there a bartender? Is it an appropriate age group? Is it, you know, managed well? Like, you know, all the things that we do when we make sure there's that. I would, I think it is, it is currently, it, it that should be something that is available to uh, people who rent town hall in the gardens. And the second thing I would change would be, is that I would change the outdoor alcohol policy to say that you don't have to go through the establishment to get to the outdoor seating. And in particular, I'm thinking about the model that I see in places like Cambridge and Somerville, where when they have a particularly wide sidewalk, that they put some tables out there surrounded by you know, a railing or whatever. And I can think of, for instance, the Broadway Plaza in its you know, infinite uh, glory be having some nice seating out there. So those would be the two things. I don't know, Mr. Greeley, if you're looking to bite off changes like that at this no, point. Absolutely, but, but that's also um, Stephen. So all right. Stephen so wants I, to propose yeah. that tonight. Well, we, um, I was, um, I'm thinking I'm, I'm on the same right. page as you for this, so uh, maybe we can team up, right? But sure, can sure. we go back for a second? Yep. Just because I agree with both of you, but we need to find the right wording for allowing drinking on sidewalks, and I think we all agree as long as there's some sort of barrier for yeah. pedestrians. I'm not sure we all agree, so it'll be a hoot. Yeah. <laughs> um, but wouldn't uh, something in the garden have to go through our one-day license yes. policy? Mm -hmm. So what, why, what needs to be stated differently in here about that? Uh, Can, is it Mr. Chairman? Is it Marianne, Doug? is it? Or Marianne, do you, Doug? Doug? I don't know. Sure. You, Doug? You so, so presently the default policy is that uh, rental of town hall premises is restricted to uh, service of alcohol only inside the premises. It's a little bit ambiguous. It does, uh, in my opinion, it does allow for the selectmen to make a special, basically, dispensation, if you'll forgive the word, to allow for alcohol service outside, for example, in the town garden. But it's a little bit unclear as to how exactly that works. So, in other words, it's not in the normal application. Somebody has to basically specially apply in order to have uh, alcohol service outside, for example, in the garden. So you could change the policy to remove that or clarify that, that you know, it's either an additional piece of the application or it's just part of the standard application. So well, why don't we make that motion? Uh, I, is, would you like it in a form of a motion? Yeah, so um, yeah, I mean, we'll let Mr. Greeley maybe. 
Right. I mean, so let's, Doug, that's your first thing to change here for us, if you would. I envisioned, now we're going to discuss what you two uh, wanted to talk about, and that, again, I believe has to go to Doug for him to really write it up for us, and then to, uh, uh, what I believe we should do is approve this policy that exists, and now add, now change that policy with the two things both of you are bringing up tonight. And then we'll come back for final board approval right. after that's drafted. And as in. we would at any other point that we want to change a policy, okay, uh, that's the way we do it. Although I have no problem with discussing these, having Doug work on them, and not approving this until the next meeting either. I, uh, if, Mr. Yes. Really, if I may, Doug. Mr. Chairman. Doug. Uh, this is basically the default for how the policies are right now. Mm -hmm. So it might be more efficient if you all want to discuss these ideas, say these are things that I'd like town council to draft into the, uh, a revised policy, and then just come back to the next meeting yeah. and have okay. that. That's fine. Yeah. I can do that. Okay, so yeah. Happy yeah. To do that. So, and I do think you want that to vote that are we in agreement? We want them to change the, the well, uh, I, I, um, I think that we, so for the first one, say with the outdoor, one day license perhaps we'll go through I, I just for the sake of having some rhyme or reason to this discussion um, and perhaps this will serve as a format for you know parking and what else um, as we move forward we'll go through the types of licenses to be granted which you spoke earlier about on table on page three and you know alcohol licenses for restaurants, package store, special one day. And if you would like uh, to make a proposal under one of those specific types of licenses, we will take them, um, we will consider those proposals and ask Doug to um, you know, come back and discuss them one by one. And I think that's, j just so we're not just talking in circles, I think that, that might be helpful to uh, add some solidity to this. Joe. I think that's fair. I just I have some general comments that I think cover most most of them. So if the, if that's okay. possible, so can uh, I just ask a, yeah. yes, a please. landmark question? Just on what um, the chairman and Mr. Dunn and Mr. Gurley are talking about, just so I can look where what language and verbiage on the the issue of serving alcohol outdoors without having to enter the establishment, but having some sort of barrier. Is that, would that language be consistent or contained with page eight um, under E, service and consumption of alcoholic beverages, and then number three, consumption of alcoholic beverages on premises? I just want to know where I put my, is that where yes. whatever yes. our conversation, yes. that's where it would be contained? So I, I want to look at the other language around it. Okay, I just want to orient myself. Thank you. Okay, thank and you. And I think this would become a point four. Whatever you all say. I just want to know, notice I want to look at what else is there too. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, and now. But just for clarity, sorry, Mr. Yes. Chairman, I know this is getting icky. Icky. Uh, Doug, am I right? But the, the town hall gardens is an issue on the application. It's not a statement within the policy. So it's, it's two, there's two separate things. The actual permit itself doesn't explicitly say that you can do it. It says you can't. But the actual policy says that basically the selectman can grant like special permission to do it. It's just a little bit awkwardly worded, and so if you're reading it, it wouldn't be clear to you that you could right. uh, have alcohol right. in the town hall gardens. In my, okay. my point of view, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, and I, I guess we should have started this off a little differently. So I apologize to everyone watching at home if this is getting a, a little confusing. But we're uh, we're doing our best. And so, why don't we start with Joe's general comments? If, if you, we'll start if you have any comments regarding what was presented to us um, from Mr. Greeley and um, the team, and then we'll get into changes after those more general discussions. Okay. Um, so I guess the only two that I think I have that, that cover multiple sections. Um, firstly, un under the um, Restaurants, I think I understand why the recommendation is there to, to make sure the penalty starts on the same day as the violation. And I think we recall that we had some um, <clears throat> some uh, discussion about about some penalties last last time around. Um, so page nine, you're on? 
Uh, yeah, okay. uh, I'm having a hard time. Oh. I, I, I use the comment feature in this thing, oh, which okay. isn't letting me uh, cross-reference sure the pages page very well. Um, my, my comment on that is that um, I, I'm wondering if we shouldn't, firstly on that issue, try to be consistent with some of the other types of licenses. Because I, I notice we don't include that for package stores, we don't include that for theaters, and if we shouldn't try for <coughs> consistency to include the same provision for the, uh, those other types of licenses as well and private clubs for that matter, mm -hmm. um, that if, if there is a violation that is found that it be the penalty begin um, on the same day as, um, as sure. the violation occurred, just for consistency between the various types of licenses. That was my first um, suggestion. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> Did you have, well, before you go on, do you have that, Doug? So a general, issue with respect to trying to make it consistent across all licenses. Make that, yeah, that recommendation. I, I have no problem with that recommendation. I think I think it probably, um, you know, would have laid out a roadmap for us the last time around. Um, but uh, I think it should be applied across the different types of licenses um, as I well. I agree with that. I had that page on everywhere. Okay, thanks. <laughs> and by the same token, I think, um, one other place, and granted, I've been at this a lot shorter time than, 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 than some of you, but I think where we also um, uh, you know, ran into a, a lot of discussion was around the length of the penalties, and we have some bans in there, and we have discretion in there. Do we really need that? Or should we just draw a line in the sand and say this is the, 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 um, the penalty if we, for a first violation, for a second violation, for a third? So rather than saying three to five, say it is three, and that, that's what it is. And the expectation is, is very clear. Mm -hmm. Or are there cases where we really want to have that discretion? I, and I put that out there as a no, question. That, this is a, um, you know, of, of Diane. Um, I like having the flexibility in the sense that we do have a hearing. Yeah. And we do sit and listen and take all the factors into consideration and sometimes there are mitigating factors and sometimes there aren't yeah um, and sometimes you can have a first offender that is totally unique to yet another um, first offender as well as you could have someone that's a first offense and basically they just had one violation whereas you could yeah. have someone who had a first offense and they could say we sent in two people and right. versus we sent in one and then the second one they didn't or, or, or something else like so right. I like the flexibility in the sense that we do hold a hearing um, with people who um, violate our policies yeah. and we are listening to what they say and sort of measuring what judgment we deem should be appropriate so I like the flexibility of having the Mr. Greeley. well as you know we went through this and I, I'm one who didn't like giving different day suspension to, to different cases um, and the ABCC uh, has encouraged us to be consistent with application of these kind of things. So um, I personally kind of like doing something like first offense three days, second offense seven days, third offense 14 days, or revocation myself. It's clear. It's right out there. It says, hey, if you do this, you lose three days. If you do it second time, you lose a week. That's pretty... Imagine losing two weeks for any of these restaurants. Uh, so, anyhow. Mr. John. Uh, but it, this is what exists, so that's why. No, I, I absolutely. I'm, and I'm asking the question. I was really interested in what, what mm. kind of the thoughts were. You know, you've seen a lot more of these than, than, than I have. Mr. Dunn. I think Diane was well spoken, and I think that the board has judgment and should exercise it. I am. Um, I agree. I am. Uh, at first, um, I think I probably was leaning towards Joe's um, thoughts on it, but I, after Diane's points, I um, I like having that leeway, and I think it's important that we can utilize it. Um, so I, I don't think we'll need a formal vote on that change. But I can I count. That. We, I um, can count. Three to two, we lost another. Um, I think Brandon, that was all I had that was Jen, general. Can we please ask the gentleman in the audience? To no, no, we will not be doing that. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> um, Joe? I think that was all I had that, that uh, spanned all of the different types. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I, in your um, first change, I, I think that we should, we didn't really get the sense of the board on that, that we asked Doug to look into. 
I agree. I think Thumbs it's up. right. Okay. Extended to all penalties. All okay. Penalty so you, can you work on that? Though? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, now, moving on, um, back to Mr. Dunn, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but I think, uh, I think the strategy might work a little better. Mr. Byrne, I'm at your disposal. What can I do? Um, so can you um, just run through um, Which one we the first? first change? So I think that we already have the town garden ones. Um, that was um, this presented, and I'll ask um, to get, I'll try to judge the feeling of the board on okay. this like we just did for Joe's changes. Um, do, does the board feel like we sh should um, modify the application? And it sounds like the policy might be okay, but just the application is something that needs to be worked on. I think, I think I'll, if, if the board has no objection, I take a shot at clarifying the policy as well. Okay. Does the board like that idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Now, moving on to, and you'd like to remove. Yeah, I just want to, see, Mr. Chairman, I'm just not sure. Did, did Mr. Caro have any other ones on the one day licenses? <laughs> on the one days, I. Is that, did um, because not. It, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Yes, Chairman, you you're, were trying you're to. Right on okay. that. I yes. did not. Okay. I'm sorry, I should have. Does anyone have anything on um, one day licenses? Yes. Um, yes, I, and I guess I would like to get a sense from my colleagues, but also from the office. Um, there's language in here. I think it's on page 19, but basically it talks about that the Board of Selectmen through its office um, has the ability to um, deny one day requests that come in basically last minute, that don't follow. I think we have a 21 day notice of requirement. I'm just gonna give a scenario um, and I'd be interested in what either my colleagues or even Mrs. Sullivan as important would um, say to that. Um, should we have language um, in there that says if during the course of a year you hit a certain benchmark in terms of a number that um, you're coming in consistently late. What it is is I can think of one or two places where they, they're consistently coming in, we're saying okay. Um, should we have some language in there that says once you do this five, ten times, um, you will need to take a further step um, and apply for say a, a theater license like I'm trying to because I hate to say no but I do want to start enforcing with just a few cases but it's a lot of requests that the office isn't being hit at the last minute and I know a lot of times we're just sort of waving that so I'm I'm just wondering is there any other stronger relief um, and you might not know what it is right now that we could propose to help that person help themselves but also you know so we're not the bad guys well, we try to be very pro-business. I think it would come down to us just enforcing this. You know, it's 21 days, you know, or it's 19 days, sorry. Mm -hmm. you, even though, you know, they, there could be a dispute on, you know, exactly what time and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, in being pro-business in the office uh, for the selectmen, uh, we try to bend if, if we can. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we do have problems on um, reaching out, you know, police aren't always available to, to get it to us, you know, on spot like we may. Um, and working with Corey, you know, we're really trying to stick to that date. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to find a way to encourage mm -hmm. our, you know, one applicant that we seem to have an issue with to go to a theater license. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be... Um, a financial benefit to them as, long, as well as time for them and us. I'm not sure how we would write that in there, okay. but I do agree with you. It would be great to have um, perhaps even a letter to them signed from the selectmen once all of these policies are, you know, set, gone over and in stone saying these policies have just been, you know, re-voted or changed, amended and voted. Um, we will not vary from these. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe keep the language that's in there that says, if you don't meet the 21 days, we have the option. And I think just because having been in the office like everybody else, we need to start enforcing that. Yes. So I'm hearing what's in there is enough. We just need to enforce it, and we all need to be aware of that. And I agree with um, whatever vehicle um, through the chairman and Mr. Greeley when this is all said and done that, you know, I don't anticipate every business owner, maybe they will assign somebody that are going to read all 32 pages, but 
perhaps in that particular instance, um, it would be nice and courteous just to highlight yes. so they know from the get-go. And, and it would okay. be great to have a vote you know, from <clears throat> the board saying, no matter who comes late, you're just late, mm -hmm. you know, on, uh, and it particularly works on that theater license, but we do have some organizations that just don't do it a whole lot, right. that think two weeks out is fine. And, uh, you know, we gotta keep it consistent, I guess, you know, and, and we have to keep it so that it's not political, you know, to be worked in through, you know, after the fact. Um, and I guess that would be it, just a commitment to it. Um, the ABCC actually uh, suggest a longer period. Uh, this is what the committee had sat down and met upon and agreed upon. It used to be 14 days. Corey actually may be coming to us in the future asking for more. But at this point in time, it is 21 days, so. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Any further discussion regarding the one day license? Seeing none. Moving on, uh, package store license. Any comments? <coughs> yes. Joe. Um, I noticed that, that in the, the package store license policy that we, um, we restrict sampling to, to um, wine, wine tasting and we say you know beer tasting is not allowed and such. I know that state law does, per, yeah it does, it says there shall be no, no no mm -hmm. beer tasting. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, state law does make provision for uh, sampling to be allowed at uh, package stores for you know, wine, malt beverages, liquors and cordials, and, and spirits. And you know, I, I think to myself, I think that possibly this is from before the time that we had all alcohol package stores in town. And I can envision that some of the package stores might want to have a, a tasting of um, you know, craft beers or craft bourbons or, or, or whatnot. And uh, I was looking through the state laws, and the state laws actually are, are pretty clear about the um, the quantities to, to serve. And I'm, I'm wondering if this isn't a section, if it's the sense of the board that we should allow the, the full flexibility that's allowed by, by state law around samplings, if this isn't one instance where we're not better served by referencing the state law, which does outline exactly what the quantities are that, that uh, are permitted. And so I just I put that out there for the, the board's Thank you, consideration. Mom. Yeah, I um, so I agree with Joe on that. So, I'm sorry. Yes, Doug. Mr. Chairman, um, so I make sure I understand the change. The change is, is, is one, to, as a licensing authority, allow the service of not only wine samples, but uh, explicitly of craft beer, spirits, and liqueurs. Well, I think the state law says malt beverages, malt beverages. and it says liquors and cordials and says spirits. That's the language of the, of the state enough. state law. There are, I think, three three or four different sections. Is it just that you want to take that specific sentence, or do you want me to also insert a No, reference? just insert a reference. I would take a lot of our language out on it and say consistent with, you know, whatever we have to do to, to, to allow those samplings, but consistent with state law. Can I just? Um, one sec. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. No, that's, that's it. That's it. Okay, Diane. Am I in the correct place where we're talking about Page package store? It's 15. Yes. Um, if I look at um, sampling, sampling does it, it doesn't that say it is allowed? It says no beer tastings are allowed. Oh, is that what it is? And it only end? says wine. Yeah. Oh, because oh, because it only says wine. So you. It want only it says wine, and it has a lot of language about okay. specific serving, it, it, serving such. The state law already outlines that. Okay, that's. I don't know that we can keep up with that. With the language that, that caters to what you say, and then yeah. look at it there. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was in the correct section. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. I know that this is not to be sarcastic, but the thing with Novus versus having pieces of paper. Um, like as everybody's talking, I'm trying to find, especially if you're following along at home, yeah. mm -hmm. as well as everybody who has to, what page we're talking yeah. about. That's the other reason I'm saying, okay. am I on the right page? Thank um, you. Man. Yeah. Further discussion regarding the package store, Joe? No. That was, that was it. Any further discussion, any board members? Yes, Kevin. Um, I'm just thinking about um, how confused we all are on this, and we made these rules, or, or the descendants of those who made these rules. Uh, and I'm wondering whether we start a process where once we send out a license, 
we send this section of the policy related to that one day license to the. We do already? We do in every, in all of these? When, when people come in for applications for yeah. this, the policy is right on the one day. But also, if they come in for an all, a restaurant, I'm, I usually, you know, I try to always give them the policy so that they understand what they're getting into, along with telling them to go to the ABCC website. And it's their responsibility to be familiar with what's demanded by. This. I wonder whether we want to start having them sign that they've read the policy. That's a good idea. We um, could do that. Yeah. Going yeah. forward, I'm sorry yeah. to add to your, but. That's a great idea. But as I'm saying, we're. I agree. We're learning as we're reading through our own policies mm -hmm. here. So, for example, and it's something Joe uh, brought up, but you don't mind me saying that, Joe. Uh, under uh, 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 package stores, they shall not allow in more than one third of windows or, or out on outside walls the posting of advertisements. Uh, I know I'm not mentioning any, but I've gone by three or four that more like three quarters of the windows are covered with advertisements. Yeah. And I wonder if they just don't realize that. I didn't realize they also need our approval for what's put up on the inside of the um, of the, these uh, these stores. Um, so, it, it, but I think that comes from zoning. I think that comes from planning, doesn't it? That that's any like a supermarket, any store in Arlington cannot have any more than one third of their windows. Uh, I, I would have assumed that sign signage. signage was completely yeah. under that. Right. It's, so th th there's a s there might be a redundant layer of um, policies and regulations, but the zoning bylaws technically this is conditions of a license, and so whatever the zoning bylaws require or don't require. Um, could be enforced under zoning, but this could be enforced separately as a licensing matter. <clears throat> but I'm saying I think we took it from the zoning bylaw, which says one third mm -hmm. uh, of the space. But I just wonder sure. whether we remind them of this. Mm -hmm. uh, anyhow, let it go. I'm not saying I'm not recommending a change there. Okay, thank you. Um, so, pa any further discussion regarding package stores? Seeing none. Moving on. Theater licenses. Discussion. Um, I just had one housekeeping thing. Um, we, we still have a line in there about prorating of theater license fees granted in 2012. It seems to me we can probably take that out at this point. That, that was put in there when we first adopted the policy, but I, presumably it doesn't serve any purpose at this point. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So strike the portion regarding prorating? Mm-hmm. Further discussion regarding theater licenses? Seeing none. Now, this is the speed we were looking for. Moving on. Farmers markets. <laughs> Oregon, Ohio. <laughs> um, discussion regarding the farmers markets licenses. Seeing none. Um, discussion regarding caterers licenses. Yes. I actually want to go back to theater briefly. I'm sorry. Okay. Because I, I think there. It, um, I think we still want to permit permit rating in general. I think that it's the, the, the specific language says prorate for the ones that were given in 2012. So let me rephrase. If someone applies for the theater license on May 1st of this year, do we want them to pay the annual fee or do we want them to pay a prorated fee? Gotcha. That's what I'm asking. And if we strike prorating entirely, the answer we're saying full fee. And if the board chooses that, I can <clears throat> go along with it. So perhaps just prorate for 2012? No, just prorate, period. Like as just prorate. So yeah. there's. May I, Mr. Yeah. Chairman? So there's Please. two sentences. There's right. there's one sentence that says, by the vote of this board, this annual fee may be prorated for licenses granted after January page 1. one. Sorry, Adam. I am on 21. 21. Right. Uh, then the next one speaks specifically to a 50% proration right. for 12. I think. Joe. Yeah. Um, I was reading through the club life.